What's up everybody, my name is Bryce, aka Deadflat Subs, and today we're going to be doing a review on Kaori Arazaki's newest work, Golden Sheet. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. But, before we get to this view, um, quickly I just want to say, Manga Suits kind of had a little bit of a lot of, uh, controversy in the last little bit. With Lanzi and now this low holy manga hall thing, there's been this little bit of drama. I don't know if that's because I'm finally starting to like get into manga tube and starting to notice all this stuff, but man, there's been some problems and whatever. But anyway, that's not what this view is. I have my opinions on it. I was thinking about doing my stuff, but I'm like, do I really want to get into drama? But then again, drama equals views. So it's like, mm. but uh, that's not what this video is about. So as far as do, let's get to the actual review of Kari or Zaki's Golden Shit. All right. First up, let's give them a little synopsis of what this is. Golden Sheep is about this girl, Sugu, Su Sugu? Yeah, Sugu Miyazaki, who has moved away a long time ago and is coming back to her old town again and decides to reunite with her middle school friends who are now in high school and they're all grown up. So they meet up and she just envisions them as being the same people uh, as they were in middle school and they haven't, they seem to not change as much. But soon after their initial meeting, you get to see how They've all changed over life and how the friendships aren't really friends anymore and all the drama and stuff that's involved with what happened while she was gone and how she's kind of stuck living in the past and this is muted. Anyway, I fixed my mic now, so hopefully the, the audio sounds better. But anyway, where was I at? Yeah, how they're all different or whatever. So you get to just see how people grow up and people change over time and that even though you... When you visit people, time almost stops for you when you when you leave somebody and when you come back and see them again, you have that old image in their head of what they used to be like and they might not be that anymore. And it just this story really encompasses all about that growing up and changing and just all the things that crazy stuff that can happen while you're gone and missing from somebody else and how your old friends can change so much. And it's just it's really good and it follows the three friends. Other friends other than her there is Sora as Asuri, I believe, and then Suyu? No, Yushin. Yushin is the last one. So Sora has a he loves creating manga and stuff like this, and he's kind of so Sora is into manga, and he likes wants to dream to become a manga creator, a professional mangaka, and he's kind of suffering with bullying and depression and a lot of stuff. And right at the beginning of the book, he it starts off with him trying to kill himself inside a car. And then Sugu comes in and sees him, and that sets up for more later in the story. But yeah, this, like, Sora story, then we have Asuri, who really wants to fit in and does anything to try to become one of the people, like, part of the clique, and just anything she can, because there's a part in the story right at the beginning in the first meeting where she sees that Sugu has an earring, and then she ends up taking a thumbtack, looking up an online review, and doing it, and injuring herself, hurting herself, trying to be like everybody else, because somebody else said it was cool. And then you have Yushin, who has a really messed up kind of mid, like, backstory when you get to learn about what that is. But, man, he and he's kind of struggling with who he is. He hate kind of, maybe not self-hatred, maybe a little bit, but he hates his family and all this other stuff. I don't want to say what's going in because that's a little bit of a spoiler. But, yeah, this story from the art to, man, Kaori Ozaki's art is perfect for this. It's like... With a slice of that drama stuff, doesn't need to be anything crazy, but what she does with remaining to, you can tell it's a Kaori Ozaki's work. What she does from art style to the, like, the, uh, just the way she creates her characters, the faces, the, dre the dresses, and also I really like, as you see, she can play guitar, she plays guitar and stuff. I like the um, American references they have to it, and I think the songs, I don't know, I have to look them up again to just see. But I think throughout, as he plays more songs, they're going to relate to what the actual topic is, like changing. Because I think one of the songs in there is Deep Purple Scars. So I'm assuming that song is about changing and all that stuff. But yeah, super good. Love the, love the American references to music and stuff. It's crazy how Japanese culture is so into American music. It just shows how great and vast American music has come and how popular it is. And maybe not only American, like British, like classic rock I'm guess, in general. Just... Because there was more, I think, Led Zeppelin, who's not an American band and all that stuff. But classic rock in general, that's what I meant, not American. I know I'm, I'm USA, I got that, got that USA pride. But anyway, yeah. This, man, this story is really good. It really doesn't, it, it keeps that dark tone throughout it. Well, a little bit throughout, there's a little bit, 
not really funny parts, but it doesn't get, like, overly dark and depressing. It does at certain points, but it doesn't maintain the aspect to the whole thing where it's like, man, I can't read this anymore. It's to the point where it's like, man, this is really messed up, but I want to know what happens next. It's not like, I'm trying to think of what, something that's super depressing. I haven't finished Goodnight Poon Poon or even started yet. I have book one, but so I can't compare it to that. So I'm trying to think of something else. I don't know. I really don't don't have anything. Maybe it, no, I was going to say Flowers of Evil, but that one was the same thing. I just wanted to know what happened next. But anyway, yeah. From the book quality itself right here, man, it's got this matte kind of look to it, which is like my favorite thing for books. I don't know. When it doesn't have that glossy cover or whatever, I just really like how it is when it has this nice grippy matte to it. And the paper quality in the book, it's like, it feel, I think it's almost like, it feels almost like this a size and a half of what a normal book is. I don't remember how many pages it is. It's probably just a normal size. But Vertical does a great job making these and, like, the print's really good. I didn't... And look at that. Look at the spine's not messed up. But I think this... Uh, no. Actually, no. Both the ones. But you like that God Slide back there? I have both of them, so I know... It, it does... I'm If it goes like her older works, like the God Slide, I'm... It's gonna have, a like, a bittersweet ending to it. Hopefully. Hopefully, they'll be able to grow and have a happy ending to this because I don't know what it's gonna be, I'm going to feel if this doesn't end up going well and it's just super depressing at the end because it's going to really bum me out like on a personal level if these like guys don't figure out what it is because there's a lot of relatability to all these characters. Like, with Struggles with Life, you, there's, each character is different enough to be able to relate to certain aspects of each one of them. So it never really feels like all these characters are having these crazy outlandish stuff is like that's never gonna happen or whatever they, although yushin's is kind of the craziest but it's happened before it's like this stuff it's not something that's like impossible for it to happen like you could see it happening be that one rare case in certain scenarios or whatever you'd have to read it to know what i'm talking about because i don't, I don't want to spoil it but yeah and st long story short this is a great series i cannot wait to see where it goes i'm just super hopeful that it go continues to stay as strong as this first volume did it really reeled me in and kept me more engaged and yeah, I just really love this. This is definitely so far, um, eight out of ten is kind of like my base good. I I, I kind of want to give it a. I'm gonna have to give it an eight. I don't want because I don't want to give it too high just in case the series continues and goes downhill. But so far, it's definitely an eight for me. Check this out. And if you want to stay for a little bit after, I'm gonna cover a more spoiler review and more in depth and telling about going in what in, happened to this volume. But long story short, get Golden Sheep. Koi Ozaki knows what she's doing. She does a great job. Anyway, guys, stick around if you want to see more. All right. Thank you guys for those who stuck around. I'm glad you stuck around and wanted to see more of what's happened. I hope, you, hope you're okay with a little bit of very in-depth spoilers of Volume 1. I've only read Volume 1, so I'm not going to go beyond that and spoil the rest of this series because I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't want to know until these come out. But anyway, but I'm going to dive into... I want to talk about Sora first, even though he's not the main character. I just really... He's kind of... It's safe, wrong to say favorite character because he's got he's really messed up and they have a favorite character in like most messed up scenario. I don't know. I he's a really good character so far and just seeing his problems and inner struggles. So Sora, it, like I said, want to be a manga creator and stuff. And as you see after the first visit, it turns to Yushin, who throws Sora into the riverbank, or not riverbank, into the river, and he can't swim, so he's like struggling to survive. And Sora's just letting there bullying him, bullying him and stuff. So. You get to see like how they struggle and depressing and how everyone he just gets tortured by Yushin on uh, so much and I probably should cover Yushin now just to explain why he does this. So in his past, his dad is actually someone of a high figure. I don't remember exactly if they even said what he was, but he was a he was a popular figure. He in political status, something like that. But anyway, he ends up getting a uh, he catches a case a case of underage. He ends up having sexual acts paying for sexual acts with an underage girl and pay like he pays a high school student to do something with him and then everyone finds out that Yushin that was Yushin's father and so he ends up getting segregated this happens after Siguru leaves and it's like in that middle school year so after he leaves after she leaves when this all happens and he just gets segregated ostracized from the whole thing everybody just keeps his distance from him and Sora and he's just kind Yushin's trying to keep him with Sora but Sora wants to talk to him and like he just but he can't because the kids, they're like, he doesn't know what to do in that scenario after his dad does something like that. He doesn't make the sparse decisions, and he just keeps his distance from him. And then one day, Yushin's in, or Sora's in his house, and Yushin shows up and asks him to come boxing, come to the gym with him or something. And then Sora pushes him off and says that he can't do it. And so Yushin kind of walks back in this winter nightscape and just kind of disappears. And so then, it, then you learn about this past, and then Sora blames himself for why he's getting bullied. He feels that he deserves this 
the, the what's happening to him because he never really was there for Yushin when he sh- when he should have been like he thought he like he should have well he should have been but thought of been because it, it's not his fault but it just shows that you pay for, like you what you do yourself affects so many other people Expe- like Yushin's dad affects his whole family everything about Yushin was destroyed in that middle school after everyone found out it ruined his social status everything and he just becomes Yushin becomes this terrible person where he's just bullying everybody, he's super, he's like that, he's a bad boy now, he's that thug or whatever, and just like, seeing that struggle and how no one was there for him, you can kind of see why he's doing it, even though it's not necessarily right, you can kind of see where it's coming from, or why he's doing it, and Sora's just in a struggle of hating himself for what he did, and just his past demons of what he did, wishing he could have changed it, just really, really sucked, it was really, it was really heavy and stuff, and then it cuts to the scene, Later on, where he's gonna kill himself, he buys charcoal at the store, goes to a car, lights it in there, and then tries to kill himself. But Sugu, luckily Sugu, Sugu, I can never say that right. But anyway, Sugu comes in, she with her car, guitar, the only guitar that her dad gave her. I'm gonna come back to Sugu now and then cut back to that story because I realized I should probably explain that before I went back. But anyway, Sugu, yeah, she gets a guitar from her dad because her dad. Uh, after they move back to Old Town because her dad, like they, sh- her mom breaks up with her dad or something like that, divorce or something. She comes back, and this is the only thing that she has from her dad. And she was really close to her dad and everything, so she loves playing and loves like she's the one who plays like Deep Purple Scars and all that stuff. And I think Led Zeppelin's mentioned in this too. But yeah, she just loves music, loves art, and then just and one day when as I go back to Sora, she ends up. Breaking the window pane on the car and shattering her guitar that she got from her dad. The only thing that she had left from her dad. Her dad's not dead, by the way. They just hinted at that at the beginning of the thing where her dad's dead, but she's not. But you went to the spoiler part, so that's your fault. But anyway, yeah, see, they end up breaking that. And then he asks Sora, because she just sees how Asuri, who wants to be with him, ends up ostracizing Sugu because she ends up getting attention and stuff when she comes back in this she can play guitar and likes American music because she seems really cool and everyone's around her. So Azuri, Asuri ends up segregating her from the community, from the group, and just not letting her be around and starts kind of bullying her in the sense that she's jealous of him because she has a crush on Yushin, Yushin and just because she's a, she thinks that Sugu is trying to go for him or whatever, even though Sugu knows that Asuri likes him and was wondering and has this thought later on or in the middle of the story whether she told Yushin how she feels or not and is kind of, and still rooting for her and she has nothing but love for her but Asuri misunderstood and assumes and you know what they say about assuming ends up destroying this relationship they have and just Yushin eventually at the end of it ends up when the so when after like right before Sora ends up going to kill himself he ha- uh he ends up, he's bullying and beating him up and then takes Sora's dog who in relay who backstories is like the one thing that Yushin wanted to be remembered as before this whole scandal. He says, looks at Yushin and like this do- whole dog thing and shows how he used to be super caring and everything. And Yushin tells Sora to remember the real him. And then he promises, which goes back to why Sora hates himself and why he wished he could have been there and everything. But yeah, after Sugu and the destroying guitar and making sure he doesn't kill himself, he, they decide to run away. So they run away to another town over the mountains after, in this small town, end up in the city, in the big city. I th- think it's Tokyo. It might not be. But anyway, he uh, they end up in the crowded street just randomly meeting their dad, meeting Sugu's dad, who ends up try- with a broken guitar. He hands- gives it back to her dad, and her dad decide- like freaks out and is like, why did you break this and everything, but ends up decide like figured out he can fix it it's gonna take a lot of work but he can do it and so when they're running away Sora and Sugu are he uh her dad ends up sending him to this old man who we haven't really known yet it just pops up to him at the end and it's the end of the story but yeah that's everything so far in volume one so like I said super good super dark it's just the message is very good very meaningful it's a very thought-provoking series and if you don't like that darker aspect and slice of life stuff i don't really know if you you'll like that because this is very dark very slice of life very meaningful and stuff like this and just the way it shows how kids grow up then like just the suckyhood of adulthood and real life and all the bad things that can happen to us it's just it really hurts in the sense but it's very very well done and very a very good storytelling but anyway guys I really love this series, like I said, 8 out of 10, and just check this out. Trust me, you'll love this if you like your slice of life drama. But anyway, wait, 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 wait. Before, before this video ends, uh, uh, 
I meant to do the Uchi Cell thing, the creative challenge. I have not forgot about it. I plan I'm gonna do it tomorrow though. I Golden Sheet came out and I was like, I gotta do a review on this, so I just put postponed it to one more day. My plan is to have it Wednesday. So please bear with me while I'm getting that while I'm gonna get this done as soon as I can. It's gonna come up tomorrow, is my plan. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next